in the green corner, weighing in at $29 billion, it's ChatGPT. And in the purple corner, weighing in at just $3 billion, it's Snee. These two heavyweights are going five rounds in the ring to determine who is the greatest application security testing tool. Round one, insecure access control. Round two, cryptographic failures. Round three, SQL injection. Round four, cross-site scripting. And round five, CSERP protection. Round one, insecure access control. What we have set up here is a basic Django CRUD app. If I log in here as the super user account, which has an insecure password. As the admin, I have access to create new books and to list all books for this example app. So here, if the user is super user, it's returning all the books, else it's filtering on only the ones for the book. So I'm gonna go ahead and just change this. Say I'm a developer and I accidentally duplicated that. So we save that there. And now any user is gonna see all of the books, which isn't what was intended. If we run sneak, will it find it? Sneak code found no issues. Now let's take a look over at ChatGPT. So super users have unrestricted access, ensure that this is intended, which it is, so that's correct. And the book list rests the super user, not the line book, all is executed. The redundancy does not introduce a direct security. So it doesn't think it's a security issue which is fair because it's not obvious based on the code that it is a security issue, but it still catches it as redundant or unhelpful. These are fair points that someone could brute force the ID if the key is not long enough. So in this case, uh, ChatGPT caught the potential issue while Sneak didn't, probably because this is not super obviously contextually a attack. Round one, ChatGPT wins. Round two, Cryptographic failure. So here in the settings file, I have my hard-coded secret and I have set redirect exempting to slash admin, which makes it so that if someone goes to admin on port 80, it won't redirect them to 443, which you could assume from the rest of the config that that would be uh, something we wouldn't want to only force port 80 on admin pages. So here I will test with sneak code Sneak detected the hard-coded secret from here in line 23, which is good. It did not detect that this is probably a security issue, but again, Sneak is trying to reduce false positives, so it makes sense that it wouldn't necessarily pick up on that. But ChatGPT determined that debug mode is set to true, which definitely this is a good note that if it was in a production setting, that should be false. The secret key, it caught the hard-coded. The allowed host is empty. Wow, this is impressive. It caught wow. the secure redirect exempt to admin and it flagged it as a potential possibility. So again, I think ChatGPT definitely caught things here that the SAST did not in terms of raising potential security issues. So another win for ChatGPT. Round two, ChatGPT wins. Round three, SQL injection. All right, with this next one, we're gonna be a little tricky about it and do one SQL injection that uses a standard, here the request is coming in, and it's just looking up the username directly from that request. And so this is obviously an insecure SQL injection that I expect anything to catch. But this next one is a little tricky because it's importing a request value and passing it back from cool, but it's just hiding in another file. And so Let's run a sneak code test, which I would expect to have more results because it has more context and it's scanning the whole folder. However, it only sees the one on line 21. But let's see what ChatGPT says about this one. All right, so ChatGPT actually found both of them, which once again puts it in the better place. It's also flagging the fact that I'm directly connecting to the database, which is not a good um, practice. Once again, it is flagging the fact that I'm using an external list and the super user permissions just raising awareness that that check is in there and everything else. And so really, once again, the fact that it caught both of these put it ahead. Round three, GPT wins. Round four, process scripting.
All right, this one's more interesting where we're using the book name as the image source. And this is a little weird, but you can see a situation where someone maybe takes their username and looks it up using the URL for a picture or something like that, where there is user data getting in this way. And what's important about this is if I do a JavaScript here example um, and submit it, then we can inspect and see. So if this was loading a GIF or some other image that we didn't want users to see, uh, this would clearly work. And the JavaScript is not getting encoded at all, which is what Django does by default. And so if I go instead, what I should do, just so you can see it is add safe here. And if I refresh, you'll notice that it is escaped. And so it is now safely uh, encoding and escaping that JavaScript. So if we remove that safe tag and run a sneak test, so it didn't find anything, just kept the hard coded secret. Chat GPT though, it does exactly find the, oh, it even finds that the Django template language does not escape the content by default. So once again, pretty amazing results here from Chat GPT. All right, the final test we're gonna do is pretty easy to do in Django because of this handy CSERF exempt decorator. By default, Django adds a CSERF token to every request, but to exempt it, all you have to do is add this decorator. So let's see if sneak code test picks this up. So sneak code very quickly, CSERF protections disabled, correctly identifies that. So with this new file, let's see what ChatGPT says. Yeah, so as expected, ChatGPT sees the CSERF protection disabled up here. It's shocking just how much ChatGPT was able to deliver quality results and findings, even without multiple files across different projects. ChatGPT is definitely a incredibly useful tool to be using for static analysis of different code. I would definitely consider in my day to day uploading different files to it that are of course approved and redacted for any sensitive information and asking it for security findings and advice. I honestly can't believe the amount of detailed findings that it was able to gather with such limited context. If you were to make a custom app that fed this even more context, I wouldn't be surprised to see high quality results. I imagine that every SaaS provider is running to implement tools like ChatGPT into their own systems in order to better compete. Now it's important to remember that when you purchase a SaaS, you're not just purchasing a simple technical advisor based solely on the technical requirements of the findings that it delivers. Instead, you're purchasing a tool that allows allows developers to action results, to ignore findings, to report on those findings, and a lot of other features that we didn't look at today. So I wouldn't use this to throw out my SaaS tool entirely, but it's more just to make the point that this is definitely great for single analysis, to empower developers, to encourage them to check the security of their code, and to really just serve as even creating small proofs of concept to give you advice on how best to fix things. There's really a lot of incredible potential in using ChatGPT as we saw today. It really outperformed the SaaS tool on a number of different fronts. And I'm sure that as Sneak continues to develop their own deep code product, that they're going to continue to be able to compete more and more in this place. As always, thank you so much for joining me today. Don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. It really helps me out. Glacier out.